This is a graph showing the number of daily cases of COVID-19 in India. You will see that from 15th of February to 3rd of March, we just had two new cases. But after that, it was a whole different story. The number of cases increase, and not just increase, but exponentially increase. On 22nd of March alone, we had 89 new cases. That's the highest increase in cases we have had so far. So, what exactly is happening? Is an exponential rise normal or is it something specific to India? Well, why not see it for ourselves? Alright, so first, let's build a control group. This box is our universe. You can think of this box as your country or your city or even your local community. And this is you, the healthy citizen represented as a dot in the center. Alright, so let's give you some life so that you can walk around the city. Great! Now, let's add some trackers in the right that help keep a count of people by their health status. Healthy, infected or dead. But wait, there's just one person here. We need more to build an actual city and see the virus in action. Ok, looks good. So here we have 100 healthy dots just moving around, walking around the city, meeting and greeting people. This will act as our base scenario. This is how normal day-to-day -day life was before the pandemic knocked our door. Let's also add a graph to the right that will visualize the change in the health metrics. The red line will indicate the number of sick people and the black line will indicate the number of dead people. Ok, so we are good to go now. Let's now introduce our patient zero infected with the virus and see what happens. The patient starts affecting few people they meet and the line for the infected people slowly rises. But with time, more people get infected and act as infectants themselves. And so the rise of infection also rises. In no matter of time, the whole population gets infected. This is the familiar exponential graph we are seeing in India as we saw in Italy, Spain and the USA. If we do nothing, large number of people will get infected in no time. Let's now add another dimension of realism. People don't just stay infected, they also recover and they also die. If there is a huge number of people who are sick, the medical system cannot take care of everyone and thus more people die. But if the proportion of sick people is less, doctors can pay attention to all the patients and the recovery is way higher. So let's have a rule, wherein if more than 40% of the population is sick, more people die. Otherwise, more people recover. A death will be shown by a dot disappearing and recovery will be shown by the dot turning blue. In this case, we are assuming that once the patient recovers, they will not get infected again. Let's begin. We see that the deaths begin to rise as the infection graph crosses 40%. Large number of people die while few also get recovered. The population settles with 57% of humanity wiped out. Sure, the rate is exaggerated in this case, but the number will act as our base metric. For our second scenario, let's see what happens if the majority of the population washes their hands with soaps and sanitizers. Instead of people getting infected instantly, now there will be a 70% probability that they don't get infected at all. Ok, action. So in this case, fewer collisions result in infections because people are washing their hands and so the virus cannot transmit even if it reaches them. This is what happened in South Korea where people took great care of their hygiene. But as you see, the death rate is still high at 41%. Definitely an improvement from 57% but still high. For our third strategy, let's restrict the movement within the city. Let's put the city in a lockdown. We'll ensure that the people still wash their hands. And we leave a small window open in the lockdown to reflect the real world scenario.
In this example, we see that the deaths have dropped further to 33%. This drop, however, isn't much considering the amount of resources needed to ensure a lockdown. A lot of government officials have to patrol the border areas and ensure nobody crosses it. This requires a lot of effort. What happens if we make the lockdown stricter? Let's say far fewer people can now cross the barrier. Let's see. This is amazing. We could restrict the number of deaths to just one and save the other half of the city completely. This is what happened in Wuhan after the Chinese government imposed severe lockdown. But wait, what happens if we run the simulation again? So in this run, despite the same setup with just one person escaping the lockdown, we see the deaths again rise to 32%, meaning lockdowns can be broken easily. All it depends is a bit of bad luck and one idiot who decides to be smart. This is what happened in Italy. When the northern parts of Italy, including Lombardy, the capital area, were put in a lockdown, people just moved to the southern part and the deaths didn't come to stop as they came down in Wuhan. In practice, all democratic countries will have a very tough time imposing lockdowns. Okay, so for our final strategy, let's try the method everyone has been talking about, social distancing. In this case, people stay in their homes and they don't go out as much. Let's remove the lockdown but still ensure that people wash their hands. And let's see what happens. Well, isn't this pretty amazing? With no need for lockdown and people voluntarily deciding to stay at homes, far fewer collisions happen. The risk of community transmission is now so low that the number of patients never exceeds 40%. Thus, the hospitals can now take care of the infected people and the recovery rates increase. In such a society, the death rate falls below 2%. This is what will happen if we all decided to participate in social distancing. Now, compare this with the initial 57% death rate if none of us do anything. The truth of the matter is, the success of our world today lies not on the governments, not on the big companies, but on ourselves, you and me. Guys, let's stay home and save the world. Jai Hind.